Recently, recently, right, and especially when um, my pastor mentioned it, and right, <laughs> I love my pastor so much. I love my pastor so much. But once he mentioned, I said, "Okay, that's something else I got to work on." I said, "But wait, I'm gonna get gentility. I can't get gentility." So then you mad? I was like, Ugh. I, was like "I can't do this. I can't. This is a. It's too high a thing. <laughs> it's never gonna happen." I've asked it for 25, 30,000 years. I've asked for 30,000 years. So before Abraham was around, Jesus, I've asked it for, for gentility. You don't give it to me. You don't meant for me to have it. So I've learned to still be Jamie in the midst of it. However, uh, powder keg attitude and a uh, smile of, uh, of, of uh, thousands of years would not help me. <laughs> and my temperament in Hagerstown because these people are ready to throw in the towel on top of me. Syncope or not, right? God syncope. Syncope is an abnormality, meaning your heart does not run in sync with what it should be running in with. Now, here's the thing. That's how I see it. That's how God defines it to me. Something is causing your heart to, right? It's abnormality. Something is causing your heart not to run the way that it should, meaning that the beats are not spaced out and put where they should be. Now, this could mess up a lot of things, and meaning the places that I'm supposed to go during the summer, the places of things I'm supposed to do during the summer, it just gets to the point where Jamie just may not be able to handle it specifically because I always had heart problems even as a kid. Grandma got up one morning and said, Do not let that girl run track. She said, because I had a dream last night, she's going to run to the finish line and drop dead at the end of it. Now, I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I think God, when God gives us dreams and different things or warnings, right, he tells us in such a way where we come out um, inspired and encouraged about it. Now, that may have been encouraging for grandma, right, because she's been through a lot. However, right, I just didn't know why, from Jamie, I just didn't know why they were picking on me. I was allowed to do anything exerting myself. I was in basketball for a couple months and I had to drop out. If syncope is, right, and it's not spelled sync like you would think sync, right, but it's close. It dropped the H, right? If syncope, right, is the abnormality that says your heart does not beat the way everybody else's beats, right, or you get beats where there should not be beats, right? Proof of it was on the EKG machine, and Kirk told me. I already knew, but I needed to hear Kirk say it. Sign on the dotted line so that way God could come in because Jesus is always on the main line. He's going to fix this thing. I know I'm not putting it in the hands of John Hopkins. John Hopkins, they, uh, they did my eyeballs. Yes, they did a job of it, right? They took my eyeballs out and put it back in, right? And I ain't walking around with one eyeball that pops out the socket, you know, and then I can put in my ear and it sees what's going on the rest of me i don't want that i want perspective ears or or or, or you know your um the, the the size of you like when you see i don't want that i don't want to see um, what's going on behind my earballs i don't want to see i want earballs i don't want i want eyeballs and ear lobes i want ear eye lobes and ear balls i don't want that so they did a good job it doesn't take anything away from John Hopkins is what I'm saying. I'm being silly, but it doesn't take away anything from John Hopkins, right? John Hopkins, right, is the place that God set up to help people, right? And I believe that they helped me. He, the, the man was very nice. Strabismus. I had strabismus, and he had to take, some people have nystagmus, right? That's one eye. I had strabismus, and he had to take both my eyes out. And so I take eye drops, and I do all these things, right, just to keep, make sure that my eyes stay liquid, right? Because if they dry out, do the allergies, do anything, we have a problem, Houston. I mean, we got a huge problem, right? So anyway, so... <laughs> So, going to for syncope, eh, it's give or take. It's, it's not here nor there, right? I'll do it if Kirk say do it, whatever. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it though, because I ain't going to have a ride, because anybody going to want to drive me no John Hopkins, so I'm just like, mm, whatever. Paratransit won't even take me. Paratransit is not drive out of the county. Nobody goes to John Hopkins. Nobody wants to go. Pastor Tim took me there. So if I, if I have to go back, <laughs> whew, I'm going to be mad. Says, oh yeah, Jen, you just t- 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 call you. Call them. I call God first though. I went to sleep, had a good sleep, and I said, He said, sync of pee is only that your heart runs out of sync where they expect it to be, where they expect it to run, right? And it's not that it's running slow, it's running fast. What happens is, is my, my heart skips a couple of beats, and it, it's because it stops, and it goes dun, 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 to try to catch up. So all that time I'm getting dizzy and feeling sick, and you know what I'm saying? So it just happens, blah, blah, blah. Stuff happens, whatever. <laughs> uh, give me apple. That's just about as beautiful as it is be for me. I don't care. I, I kept thinking, okay, Thursday prayer call, Thursday prayer call, Tuesday, then Thursday prayer call. I kept thinking when I'm going to get to pray with the saints again. Now, church on Sunday. Yes, church on Sunday. I wonder what I'm going to wear. Hmm. I need yellow blouse. Now, y'all understand? That's what I was thinking while Kirk was talking to me. <laughs> I could look at you and be like, we spotted you. Yes. Hmm. And it's bouncing right off me. Because we went through this. We did this already. I did this before. 
But I didn't pass and come out of it with a passing grade. Now I will. Hey God! He said, sync of Jamie is just when your heart is out of sync. Meaning, if you were asking me for tender heartedness, to make your heart tender, no, man, what if nobody in this world, what if, just give me one moment, what if nobody in this world is asking God for that? For a tender heart. Now, while God is tenderizing my heart, so obviously he's going to have to adjust the beats of it. Mama cut up, so it lines up with the beats. Y'all don't know, I already went to God on this thing. I'm not going to talk about spiritual beat. That, happens, that actually happens to me physically. So I got up a couple of nights, a lot to a night before last, I got really bad. So the, the staff actually considered calling the ER. <laughs> I considered, but then I, I said whatever. So <laughs> I'm going to sleep. Plus I have my pretty white nightgown. And I love my pretty white nightgown. It has the pearls in the front of it. It has lace for straps. So I just wanted to finish my sleep. I want to finish it because my nightgown loves me. And my nightgown wanted me to finish the sleep. No. Okay, but that's true though. I actually, I was not, no, whatever. So <laughs> I'm going to ER. We did that already. We did it two weeks ago. <laughs> we did that. So it runs, it runs out of sync. So I just skip a beat and then I feel like these stabbing pain. And it's not, I said, it feels like the prong of a fork. Not like stabbing with a knife. It doesn't feel like that. It feels like an ice pick. I keep saying ice pick stab, ice pick stab. It's a very thin instrument. And when I got up this morning, God showed me a meat thermometer. So it's a meat thermometer, meat thermometer. Except what if? <laughs> I said, God, what if? Because now God brought out the what if. So I said, God, what if? Because the enemy always wants to use what if. Remember I told y'all the enemy used that what if statement, the what if to just confuse and cause me anxiety. I said, what if I, you stop talking to me? What if you just fill out my application? What if? I don't need what eight hours of what ifs about what, what if you do this, what if you do that. What if you just process my application and let me know? What if you do that? What if you put drug dealers beneath me? What would I do? Why would you even ask me a question like that? What if you just be a responsible realtor and landlord and just do what you are supposed to do? What if? I said, God, you bring me. You brought what if to me? What if, right? Um, you're asking me to give you a tender heart, and what I have to do is, because I said, oh, last I said, God, I'm unsafe. What's going on with me? My heart is hard. My heart is actually hard. It's hard. I said, because my pastor, what he does, and it, whether I'm mad at him or whether I'm happy or whatever. Well, I, last Sunday I was like super mad at him because he, I mean, come on, I want to do great. I want to do good. I want to just do, and he just sometimes he says stuff that just get on your skin. So anyway. <laughs> So he, it felt like he took his, he didn't take his pinky finger, he took his whole hand and shoved it down my throat. It was like, scratch, scratch, scratch. I mean, I think he got sick of my heart too. <laughs> if I met a Jamie Hart. So, <laughs> I think my heart just hard, so I gave up. But what if, right, what if him and God are working on my heart? What if he's scratching away at the callousness? God said calcification. What if some of us have been through so much that this area around our heart is calcified? I told you guys in the beginning of the week, God showed me, he preached on the four soils. What if, right, you can have good soil, good soil, good soil for a heart, right? But if the, but if the, but if the world comes in, right, and they don't turn you away from God, but they just harden the edge of it, they just harden the soil of it. We had dirt in Jersey. The dirt was hard. It was, wasn't rocky. There wasn't a lot of rocks in it. It was hard. And when you walked on, it felt like the ground. You could not walk outside without shoes on. And there was always cracks in it. Always a whole bunch of cracks. And it was white along the, um, the edges and on the inside of cracks. And then the white just moved towards the inside of it. God said that the, sometimes calcification occurs. Uh, but then my soil might be rocky. So he had to get through that rocky soil. Right? And then you got to go down. Right? And then the pastor still got to come in. Right? Because he's got to get through. He's got to get through. He's got to get through the fact that you allowed. Remember, that person may have not torn you away from the church, but you allowed what they said to hurt you. You allowed what they said to, to attack, a, a, a stab at you. I closed my heart up. I thought, but what happens when you think when what you think you're closing up? God, come my mind, has to hold open. So your heart's been held open, but without beating. Your heart's been held open, but without movement. Your heart's been held open. God has to hold your heart, hold your heart open. I close it, close it up, right? But God has to hold it open. So what happens when your heart is held open in mid beating kind of a uh, 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 movement? Have you ever taken a God said, Have you ever taken an M and M and a peanut, a plain M and M, not a peanut one, and cracked it in half? Do you know what happens? The the chocolate, there's chocolate on the inside that's softer, but the hard candy shell stays hard, and there's white, and there's, there's hard, right? But what happens if you sit it out? Everything becomes hard. So my inside hard, my outside hard, 
all of it was hard. I was hard hearted and it made me hard headed, right? And I was headed, right, for getting beat by my pastor again. I was headed for getting beat by my pastor again. Why? And again and again and again, as much as it hurt, I mean, it feel when he, the, mm, when, and having a conversation with him, when, he, having a conversation with him feels like he's stabbing me with seven ice picks. But the thing is, I pray, y'all better pray that y'all pastors never stop talking to you. Y'all better pray that he, they never stop, that they never stop. Keep beating, keep beating. I'm Keep beating me because that's just, I don't want to say that because I really don't want it. <laughs> that's just a, you don't want you want change, but you don't want to do what it takes. You want change, but you got to say you want discipline. If you want change, see, you want to be discipled, but even if you get discipled, you could be discipled. And God's saying people have been discipling you all your life, so you can't be discipled. You've been in church, so you've been discipled. People can disciple you, can be discipled all your life, but if you never, if they never discipline you, you'll never see change. And your heart will always be hard. And because of it being hard, it'll be like that, la- that nasty, right? Because not only you, you have a, you have a heart that's good. God gave, uh, God made a good heart. But not only, right, will it be calcified and be nasty like that plain M&M, right, sitting out with a chocolate heart and a outside heart. Not only will it be, right, hard, but it'll be nasty. Nobody will want what's coming out of that M&M. It's got chocolate inside of it. Your kids will look at it like, yeah, it's got chocolate inside of it, but it's molded. And even when manna comes into it, when word comes into it, you always look at it and you'll say, okay, what is this coming into me? Because you're always covering up, you're always trying to keep your stuff, yourself from being touched. You'll see manna, manna will come into it. Manna means what is this? This is the word of God. When manna, when the word comes into it, it will not be able to help you. It will not be able to affect you. Why? Because with a hard heart, right, once manna comes in, on its way down before it even reaches the place where it could soften you the manna will be, get old and smelly and sweaty and moldy and nasty why because we know manna comes in on the time man has a time frame it has to be done that day and the only day you get an extra day for it is on sunday excuse me on the sabbath so even word comes in if word don't come in on the same uh, time clock that the medicine comes in, you are done. Because you're getting exactly what you need. But it looks like you are not getting what you need. And people get frustrated with you. They get tired of helping you because of the fact that you are, they see you getting exactly what you need. You can help on the pastor. Just like Harmony looked at me. She said, Jamie, aren't you talking to people? Aren't you studying with people? The thing is, yes. But when, you get, when your pastors get sick of hearing from you, they get sick of the time, uh, the same tired, lazy, time not sensitive, insensitive, the time insensitive stories that you tell, right? It's your only way of it describing the hell that you are going through, right? They get sick of listening to it. Why? Because I gave you word. I gave you what you needed to handle this. Didn't I talk to you about it? Didn't we go over this? That's not my passage, y'all. But it could be. I said, what if, 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 what if I got you on the time clock, right? What if the world is calling the syncope, but I'm calling it this glory? What about, what if the world is calling the syncope, but I'm calling it your story, right? But, 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 there will be glory, right? But, there will be glory after this. There will be hope, there will be hope after this. There will be love after this. Hallelujah, hallelujah, there will be love. You believe me if I said I just wrote that just now, just right then and there, just right then and there, just right now? There will be glory after this. There will be hope, there will be hope after this. There will be joy after this. There will be glory, there will be glory, there will be glory after this. That's what I did when I got beat. I would just make up songs and sing them. I had a little merry-go-round thing, and I still remember the song. I remember the music that it played. And Tasha would get so mad at me because I will make up words. But the thing is, I did it before I could talk. Because I will make up words that didn't exist. So I sang words to it. I sang words to it. And I still remember words I sang, but they weren't words. So I'm not going to sing it. But what is that? It was training for the beating. The, the regular round was training for the beating. 
Tasha said, I was so happy when we threw that Ferris wheel away. I was like, what Ferris wheel? <laughs> I still remember it was a merry-go-round. Tasha called Ferris wheel. I don't care. I sang to it. There will be love. There will be love. After this. There will be joy. There will be joy. After this. Ha. Hallelujah. How do you flat on the song you writing right now? Ha. Hallelujah. After this. After this. Y'all know I'm not where I get that song from. I just thought about it. I want to sing it, right? But um, I, I couldn't. You can't. There will be glory after this. There's a, but but that is not the same words either. It's a song, Back to Eden. Back to Eden by Donald Orange. And my friend actually sang on his CD. The song is, There will be glory after this. <laughs> it doesn't sound like that, right? So I just wrote that just now. Right? Because what happens when I take it and I do something else with it? What happens when I take it, slow it down, and, 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 and remove the Donald and the Lawrence from it? It becomes God-driven, because it ain't mine. I just wrote it. That's all oh, you should just put in my mouth. And I, there will be glory. And he likes it, because he's still singing it. After this. I like the Holy Spirit said, that's a little man inside you, Jamie, that, that won't stop singing. That's me. <laughs> so he likes it, so. There will be glory. After this. There will be love, there will be love after this. A little bit better. Like find a key and, and stick with it, Jim. There will be joy, there will be joy after this. Hallelujah. There will be love. When they move the sink of pee and they did whatever they did with it, they throw in the garbage. I don't know, they, they throw in the garbage. I do that sometimes. I throw stuff in the trash. When I get sick of it, I get sick of doing, doing something. I just throw in the garbage. Like I did with PTSD or OCD. Y'all ain't even about my OCD or my PTSD. It's yours because you claim it. Right about that. You know, you're talking about my glory, my story, my joy, my peace, uh, my unspeakable full of a uh, fury on fire for God. More than a conqueror, overwhelming, overcoming. My father, I'd rather you say my father than my pain. After this, and until you get there, sing. Sing the song, sing the hymnals until you get there, right? Because here's the thing, thank you, Pastor David. We were looking at it, right? I think there's 15 uh, Psalms of Ascent. In the Psalms, three of lament. But do y'all realize they were still climbing? Still climbing to, to Jerusalem while they were lamenting. They were lamenting that you're going, going back down the stairs. <laughs> God has left me. <laughs> you double minded, that's what it is. And you deserve to be turned into salt as a result of it. Right? So she was double minded, wasn't she? She wanted to leave. She wanted to be delivered, but she also wanted the Sodom and Gomorrah in it. She also wanted both. When you want both, you cannot have anything. You cannot have it. Therefore, you took you get salt out of it. You're salty. You're salty now. If you weren't salty before, you're salty now. Why? <laughs> that's that's me, Jamie. But you're salty. You're salty. You decide. Consider me or consider it. You decide. You got one, one guy to consider you. Then get yourself together. Here comes a miracle. But it's gonna come your most barren spot. I can't touch my heart. Can I get it? My pastor seems to have a, g a good handle on it. What is pinky? He calls a lot of trouble with pinky. That's just how I see it. I see his hand, and he shoved his hand down my throat, which is kind of obtrusive when you really think about it, but that's how I see stuff. I see it epic and art art artistic, artistically epic, right? So he stuck, took his little pinky and shoved it down my, my throat <laughs> and started scratching at the surface. Since then, he's been scratching every now and then. And then this weekend, I think he just got frustrated with me and just shoved his whole hand down there. And he was like, ksh, ksh, with all his fingers. Are you tender to God's considering? Or excuse me, are you tender to God's consideration? Because God considered Paul. Because God considered Paul. We already talked about Paul's right now. We still talk about Paul's, right? Paul's. 
He wrote uh, 14 out of 27 books of the New Testament and he brews, he brews, right? He brewed, he obviously brewed something. He brewed something, he brewed some coffee or something because he could be the one that wrote uh, Hebrews. I told Pastor uh, Randy, I was like, he could have been the one. Pastor Randy was like, but I don't think so. I was like, okay. <laughs> See, he said that then. <laughs> he could have been the one, he could have been. Because be, it's, it's better for me to say, it's, it's always a better story for Jamie, for Jamie, to say you wrote 14 out of 27 books. It means you wrote more than half. Then it's when you say you wrote just under, just under. I don't want, I, I don't like that. I don't, I don't want people to say that about me. I don't, I don't like that. What are people going to say about you? That when you're given an option, you considered yourself or you consider God. You consider how you feel or you consider God. The syncope hurt? Yes. I felt dizzy probably like four or five times just doing this one blog just now. And so what do I do? Recover. <laughs> I recover. I recover like uh, 1 Samuel chapter 30 recover. He said pursue. And you shall recover all. You shall without fail recover all. So I was pursuing doing this blog and I, 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 I kept don't going. And we had two minutes, two hours, and eight minutes. And y'all didn't even know. Oh yeah, I got real dizzy. What'd I do, pursue? And without fail, come on. What? When I get sick, I pray for my pastors. When I'm well, I pray for my pastors. When I get sick, I pray for my pastors. I start out praying, that God, I don't want them to get sick of me. I don't want to have nothing wrong with their hearts. Touch their heart ventricles, touch their heart chambers. They got chambers in their God, and the ventricles work like rooms. That's what they said on scrubs. That's what JD says on scrubs. It works like rooms. So touch the rooms, touch the ventricles, touch the whole thing. God, touch the skin of the heart, God. It works like rooms, and you brought inside it, each one of them rooms, and you rearrange the furniture inside it, God. You touch their heart, touch the color of it. I know it don't look like a red, bright red, like the Valentine's, but make it look like a Valentine, God. Give them some Valentine's, God. Give them some chocolate, God. Give them they like chocolate. I'm telling y'all, that's how I pray. Because <laughs> I was sad about Kissingapi. <laughs> Miss Jackie was like, we, we was, we was going to pray for you because Pastor Digi said, we're definitely going to pray for you. We're definitely going to pray for that. It's two weeks ago. Definitely going to pray for what you're dealing with. Definitely going to pray for that. This was, this was second round of antibiotics for the other thing that I'm dealing with. And now we got to hit the third round. We just don't know what. We don't know what. So I was like, we definitely going to pray for you. <laughs> so they praying. I'm praying too. They was like, and I know Jackie was like, oh God, and, and, and help Jamie afterwards. And I laughed so hard, but I pulled the mic away from me. Because I know they forgot I was sick. <laughs> because I did too. I was waiting. What happens when you go to praying and, and you go to fighting for um, everybody else? You go to fighting and praying in, in spirit and people forget you sick. If I'm in a hospital room, I want y'all come have a prayer call in the hospital room. If I'm in a hospital, I don't care. They, they take, I take my heart out and wash off and put another lane in there. They had to do it with my eyeballs. I mean, I think they got to do it. They had to do it with my eyeballs, both of them. And now all my eyeballs fine. So if they got to do it with my heart, they got to do the same thing. If they got to do that in the heart, in the hospital, then y'all come inside the hospital and y'all pray with me. We're going to still get this thing going. Matthew 18 20 don't stop just because Jamie ended up in the hospital. Matthew 17 20 don't stop just because Jamie in the hospital. And I'm not going to waste a mountain over this heart. My life, my life, my life, because it's not a mountain for me, it's a mountain for you. More often, than, more often than not, people hear that you're sick and it affects them, it affects them more than it affects, affects you. This is, this, Kurt, I've, I've received so far this morning eight emails from Kurt. <laughs> and I, that's, 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 that, that's not, I'm telling you, between, that's between 7.30 when he gets there and 9. I've been on this thing, so I don't know what else he sent. <laughs> so I said, barfing. Thanks, God. Thanks, Kurt. Bye. Barfing. Barfing much. Thank you, Kurt. Because I, I have symptoms. And I want to tell him all symptoms at once because he get overwhelmed. He just detonate. ER. He detonate. So I'm like, okay, I can't have that. I, I don't want to go to ER, so I, so I want to detonate. <laughs> but what happens when you detonate ahead of time? What happens if you don't ask God to consider me? And after you detonate over time, if, with the syncope thing, with this, this infection that will not quit. I mean, it's been a month, and I'm Jamie, so of course, infections are going to be more in me, in, inside of me, because I have an overactive immune system. That's a stupid problem to have. When I get sick, my immune system beats me. It beats me. I'm like, okay, this is just not fair. But what's going to complain about it? going to help it? No, so laugh about it. <laughs> 